Are you trying to transition to instructional design? Maybe you're still in the upskilling process, or maybe you've started looking for jobs recently, or maybe you've been looking for a while. Either way, it's tough right now. The job market is flooded with a number of candidates who are all looking to land a limited number of ID roles available, especially remote roles. I was there a few months ago myself, but recently I landed my first freelance contract and a full-time job that I love. In this video, I'm going to share some tips and strategies that I learned along the way that helped me transition and that I think can help you too. My name is Scott Schmidt, and like many people trying to transition to instructional design, I was a burned out K-12 teacher at the high school level. I taught for 16 years. And by the end of my 16 year career, those last few years, my work-life balance did not resemble anything remotely close to what you would consider to be an actual balance. I was spending nearly every evening and weekend trying to catch up on all the tasks that I couldn't do during the school day because my school day was filled up with teaching the students. And so I just got to, it just got to the point where it didn't seem like it was worth it anymore. So I started looking for something different, discovered ID. And as I worked on my transition, I made a, certainly made a bunch of mistakes along the way, especially at the beginning, but eventually I hit my stride and really propelled my transition forward to the point where then I landed a freelance contract and landed a full-time job shortly after that. And, I, and it's a job that I absolutely love now. So I learned those strategies as I went, and I want to share those strategies with you so that you can fast track your transition to instructional design as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first of all, let me go over the basic strategies that I want to talk about in this video. Number one is having a plan. You got to have some kind of a plan for how you're going to do this. Otherwise, it's really going to slow you down. So we'll talk more about that. Your portfolio is key. You got to have a strong portfolio because that's what shows hiring managers what you can do. Next, you're going to want to be visible through networking. This was a struggle for me. I didn't care for it at the beginning, but then I came to realize it's a super important part of the process. This is an interesting one and one you might not expect, but it was a huge factor for me. You're going to want to make sure you can be yourself in the interviews. And we'll talk about more about that here coming up. All right, first, let's talk about having a plan. The thing is, is that it's real easy in the beginning stages of the transition to get caught up in the YouTube rabbit hole of all the YouTube content that can really be inspiring and really get you excited to become an instructional designer. But if you have no plan, it's just this mishmash of videos that you're watching with no cohesion, no coordination, and it's going to really slow down your transition. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is identify the skills and knowledge you will need. Now that may mean watching some YouTube videos and that's fine, but now you'll have a focus for what you're going to watch. Next is you got to decide how you're going to gain the skills and knowledge that you need. What method are you going to use? Are you going to go take a college course? Are you going to join a boot camp like Devlin offers? Are you just going to try to watch YouTube videos or read things online that will help you? Whatever it is, make a plan for how you are going to specifically get the skills and knowledge that you need. The next thing you want to make sure to do is set a timeline for yourself. If you don't, this could end up being a never ending transition process. If you give yourself a deadline, you can start to plan out. I want to meet this goal by this time. I want to meet this goal by this time. You may not actually meet that goal, but at least you've set that for yourself so that you can progress at a, at a rate that's going to get you where you want to go as quickly as possible. All right. Now I should mention I joined Devlin's bootcamp and went through it, and it was a huge factor in my success uh, in landing an ID role, not only the contract job, the freelance contract job that I got, but also the full-time role that I have. If you are if you want, you know, kind of a one-stop shop for these three things, Devlin's bootcamp can help. Okay, so if you want more information on that, you can click the link in the description, 
or you just go to idbootcamp.com and you can learn more about how you could join Devlin's Bootcamp to really help you with all of these steps to forming your plan for transitioning to ID. The next thing we want to talk about is the portfolio. It's so important because the portfolio is what sh is what shows hiring managers what you can do. Hiring managers want to see your skills in action. They don't want you to just tell them what you can do. They want to see it. And the portfolio is where they can do that. Okay? But it's not just a place to link to your work. It should not just be a simple website that says, here, go look at this project that I created. Look at this project. All right? It's more than that. You want to highlight the best features of your work. And you also want to demonstrate to hiring managers that you can do the job that they want you to do. You should have a full process write-up for at least one of your big projects that you're most proud of that really shows the skills that you have. And honestly, you can design your portfolio in a way that really gets hiring managers excited to potentially hire you or at least reach out for an interview. And you can also st design that portfolio to optimize what the hiring managers are going to see. They're not likely to spend a lot of time on your portfolio. So you got to put the most important things right in front of them. And so there's a strategy to that. Okay. Next, you could go ahead and create a portfolio and you might think it's fantastic. But until you get feedback from people who are in the industry already, who know what an ID portfolio should look like, you just really don't know if you've hit the mark or not. So it's really important to get feedback. And this is one of the best features of Devlin's Bootcamp, I should mention. You can get feedback all along the way from professional instructional designers who can let you know if your project is on the right track, if your portfolio is on the right track. All right. It is an invaluable resource in your transition because with that feedback, you'll know that you're set up to be, to position yourself to be the person that those hiring managers want to hire. All right, let's talk about networking. Now, I don't know about, about you, this was not easy for me. I was very averse to networking. I always thought it was like, why would I just randomly try to connect with these people? We're talking LinkedIn, that's probably the best place to be. So I'm like, well, am I really just gonna create a LinkedIn profile and then like just randomly contact people and say, hey, I wanna connect with you? And the answer is, yeah, you want to do that. Okay. LinkedIn is definitely the place to be. And what you're going to want to do is you want to be strategic about who you're connecting with. Try to connect with people in the ID field, or at least people in learning development. I think what you're going to find is what I found. There's lots of helpful folks out there that want to help you succeed. I was very, I was blown away that when I, at, when I tried to connect with people, a decent number of them responded with a personal message and said, Hey, if you have any questions about the process, let me know. So I found that as a, as to be a great, valuable resource. So like what I did is one day I just said, you know what, I'm going to swallow my pride and do this. I reached out to 50 people. The next day I reached out to 50 more. And then the next day, 50 more, <coughs> excuse me. And before you knew it, I had, you know, 150 connections and, and I was like, wow, okay, I really did it. This didn't seem like it was really all that bad. Actually, it, was, it turned out to be very helpful. The, here's the thing, too. This is why you want to make a lot of connections on, on LinkedIn. It's not just because you can connect with helpful folks, but it works like a lot of other social media. The more connections you make, the more likely you will turn up in search results. And I'm talking search results by hiring managers, which is who you want to find your profile. But here's the thing. Just setting up a profile that hiring managers can see is not going to necessarily set you up for success. You need to optimize your profile. You need to optimize it in a way that whatever search terms the hiring managers use, you are going to appear in their search results because it's on your profile. And not only that, but when they get to your profile, you want it to look attractive and professional and really promote you as a strong candidate for the job that they're trying to hire for. All right. Now, again, Devlin's Bootcamp offers help with this. It helped me tremendously. I know another Bootcamp pro that I work with in Devlin's Bootcamp. This helped her quite a bit. 
she saw a dramatic increase in the number of search results she appeared in after she got her profile optimized with the help of Devlin. So if it's something you're, if it's something you want to really take seriously and get your LinkedIn profile in a good spot, you can get that help in Devlin's bootcamp. All right, next one, be yourself in interviews. This is one that may not be as obvious, but here's the thing. If you have the skills, you should be confident you can do the job. If you're not confident in your skills, you probably need to work on that more before you start looking for ID jobs. Because if you're not confident, that's going to come through in the interview. So if you have the skills, you should be confident you can do the job and you should feel confident just being yourself. Okay. Hiring managers are looking to hire a person, not a machine. So this is where I, I took a little bit of a different approach. Some people may take a diff, may take a different approach than what I did, but I decided that I wasn't going to focus as heavily on interview prep for ID interviews. I did a little bit, but I also just focused on making sure I was going to be my authentic self. Because again, hiring managers want to find a person that not only knows how to do the job, but is somebody they're going to want to work with. You know, because you're a person, you're going to be working with these people. They want to see if you're a good fit for their culture and on their team. Now, here's the other thing about being somebody else that you're not in interviews just to try to impress them. That can backfire. If you are, if you come across one way in the interview and then they hire you and you are somebody completely different, once you start working with them, you are not getting off on the right foot with your teammates. All right. They might be skeptical of who you are and might be like, why did we hire this person? This is not the person that they were in the interview process. So it's very important that you're, that you are yourself. I got to say this worked wonders for me, both the freelance client that I, that I got and the interview team on my, for my full-time job, they both made a mention of the re one of the big reasons we chose to work with you is because you seemed enthusiastic and authentic. You just seemed like a person who is excited to do the work and is someone that we want to work with. So it really made a big difference for me. Showing that you're enthusiastic and willing to learn can make up for a lack of skills in the job description. Because here's the thing. If you look at the job descriptions on LinkedIn, a lot of times they list tons of skills that they want people to have. Very rarely does anybody have all those skills. And they know that, but they want to find somebody who has that enthusiasm, who demonstrates that willingness to learn so that they can think like, you know, I want to work with this person. We can help them get these particular skills, but this is a person I want to work with. So it really can't help make up for any lack of skills you do have. I certainly didn't have all the skills that my full-time job was looking for, but <coughs> excuse me. But the, but the hiring team made a point to tell me that they said, we just liked you. You were enthusiastic. You seemed like you really were excited to do the work. And so we just decided, yeah, you seem like a person we want to work with. So let's go ahead and, and do that. And we'll help you with the skills that you may need. All right. Now, if you do want some interview prep uh, assistance, Devlin's Bootcamp offers that too. So it's something to consider as you go through the process of deciding how you're going to transition. If you would like some of that interview prep help, Devlin's Bootcamp can do that for you. All right. So I figured I'd share a little bit about my current role because any of you teachers that might be watching this video might be interested to know that I work in a public school district. Yeah, I got hired as an instructional designer in a public school district. It's kind of interesting. The district is large, so that's why they have a full ID team. All right. Now, here's the thing, though, is I get to use my skills now, my instructional design skills, in an environment I'm already familiar with, which I really like. I'm a strong proponent of public schools, and so I like that I can still be in that environment just in a different role outside of the classroom. This is what's so awesome. I get to create learning experiences for a lot of different roles in the, in the district. My team creates training and learning resources for HR, transportation, food service, custodians, communications, payroll. I mean, really any number of, any number of areas of, of different roles in the district, we provide training for them. 
And I really like that I get that variety. Here's another awesome thing. I get ample time to collaborate with my teammates. It's fantastic. I just love that now, Instead, when I was teaching, I didn't get to do that. I was stuck in my classroom. Now I get to work all day with my teammates and collaborate. And I make them better. They make me better. And it makes our work better that we can collaborate. I get to work. I mentioned it just a little bit ago how, how much variety I have in not only the roles that I work with, but all those, also the types of projects. I mean, we create e-learning, we design in-person trainings, we do videos, we uh, create knowledge base articles, and just all kinds of different things that I get to work on now. Things I would not have thought I would ever have a chance to do, I get to do now in my current role. And one of the other awesome things is now I get to use my time how I want to. My day is not prescribed by a bell schedule. I get to decide what I'm going to work on, when, and for how long. I get to priority, prioritize my work day, and it's just fantastic. All right, so as a recap, let me remind you that uh, one of the steps, one of the first steps, let's kind of recap the, these main strategies here. Number one is have a plan, Okay. Uh, you got to have that plan for how you're going to transition to ID. What's that going to look like? You want to make sure you have that plan. The portfolio, you got to have a strong portfolio. Okay. It's how hiring managers are going to see what you can do. It's your way to promote yourself as the best person for that job. Be visible through networking. It's key. Get on LinkedIn, create a profile, reach out to a bunch of other people in the industry they're going to be helpful and you'll show up in more search results of hiring managers. Be yourself in interviews. Remember that hiring managers are hiring, hiring a person. They want to make sure that they're hiring somebody that they want to work with and demonstrates an understand, demonstrates an enthusiasm, uh, for the job is somebody that they want to work with. Okay. So being yourself in the interviews is really is important there. Okay, so I'm going to kind of wrap up this video here, and I just have a few other messages for you, okay? Remember to trust the process and that good things can happen. If you create the plan, if you take the right steps, who knows when it'll happen for you, but you're much more likely to get where you want to go if you trust that process. If you take these steps to position yourself to be a, to position yourself to be a top candidate for a role you will love, you're setting yourself up for success. Okay? You can position yourself to be the top candidate. Now, if you want help landing a role like I did, we'd love to have you in the boot camp. I absolutely could not have landed my job without it. You can get one-on-one -on -one feedback from Devlin and his team, including me. Um, and it's a team of real ID professionals to ensure that your uh, portfolio is top notch. We want to make sure your portfolio sets you up for success. We also want to help you uh, create that portfolio so that you can make yourself super competitive for these roles. Okay. Not just to show what you can do, but also to make sure you are super competitive with the, the flooded market right now. Okay, so you can learn more uh, about Devlin's Bootcamp by clicking the link in the description or just go to idbootcamp.com. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you, you learned something that will help you out. Uh, I'm glad you uh, reached the end of this video. So um, bye bye for now and good luck to you.